given access to receive messages of clarity, guidance, and love. As channeler, psychotherapist, and author, Noemi Grace has an intimate dialogue with the divine on your behalf. Lisa Berry, creator of the show Light on Living, will be co-hosting as live callers ask their burning question on self-love, self-healing, deepening relationships, areas of struggle, and next steps. By simply listening in, you're receiving wisdom that will lead to sacred stability from every channeled message that Noemi delivers. Join us now as we give you access to Angels and Grace. And happy Monday, everyone. Noemi and I are here to help you heal and hear what the heck the wound is talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Aww. So glad to be here. Yes. Well, hello, Noemi. I love sharing this time with you. This has been mm-hmm. a wacky, wonderful, and and crazy walk through um, living <laughs> beyond the wounds. <laughs> You and I, whenever we come up with a theme or an idea and we go with it, boy, it's it's certainly, we're jumping on the frequency. Oh, oh before I jump into this mm. one, I got to ask you, when I say that, uh, when people are have a theme floating around and, they, and they're really paying attention to it, do you think that we're, a, we've a tr- we're, we're drawn to the frequency or is it because we've tuned into the frequency now we are making that more prevalent in our lives? Well, they both kind of seem to be correct to me. I mean, so whenever we focus on something, right, we get more of that. And when we offer ourselves to, we really have offered ourselves. I don't know if you knew this, Lisa, but we've offered ourselves to be um, vehicles, instruments of, of living beyond the wounds. And so... That means our lives get stirred up. And this week, I guess it was your life. Last week, it was last time it was my life. So I'm happy for passing the, the baton. <laughs> passing the stick here back and forth. You're turning the torch. All right. Yeah, like a talking stick. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, what I thought would be great to do, and, and I'm so glad that you, you agreed there, Noemi, is that um, to all of our listeners, we, we write up a show description, which maybe you've read on, you know, Times the website, or maybe you've seen on our Facebook page or whatnot. But then I thought, you know, what we we the listeners who just tune in they they don't really get the show description so I thought today I'm going to read it and and because also I like that I kind of we wrote it in a way that it's it's not like a show description it's the, it's a conversation from the wound from the wound itself so I will dive in and then all the listeners will know exactly where we are on in the series which is living beyond the wound and the today's episode is called if wounds could speak If wounds could speak, the wound raises its hand and says, I have something to say and proudly proceeds to reveal its wisdom. When I was first created, I was raw and vulnerable and needed much protection. I needed time to heal. I did not know if I would ever heal because the hurt went so deep. I started building a wall, a scab around myself, but I kept getting hurt and re-wounded with every trigger, with each word that rubbed me the wrong way and created friction. And by the pain that I felt because your closed heart did not see me and love me. As you toggled between hot and cold, you either ignored me or offered me no love, or you suffocated me and over-identified with the incident that caused me pain. I had no space to heal. When you decided to begin this journey of awareness, you finally saw me and acknowledged me for the wound I was. With your acceptance, your compassion and forgiveness, I started to speak through your heart and share my wisdom. The wisdom from the wound allows us to live beyond the wound. It says that it's okay to not be okay. It says, go on and look. It's okay to see now because you are seen with eyes of love. If you let your fresh wounds, your partially healed wounds, or your fully healed wounds speak, what would they say? And so today you are joining us, Noemi Grace and myself, and we are having this Mm. conversation that your wound would love to have with you. And then listen, because our hearts are telling us, and and that's where Noemi shared, my wound really, really spoke loudly this week. And at first I didn't like it, but then I really was like, wow, there's a lot that I I do want to hear. And the most important thing, Noemi, was when we said, it's safe to look now because now we can see with the eyes of love. Mm, that was beautiful. 
and just the way that you you wrote this description based on what we talked about and the way you wrote it of of how the wound you know the expression of the wound of, of feeling unloved and um and not embraced and not accepted and and you know i think that's our initial reaction to having a wound which we all do we have exactly. many but like, oh, you know it's like mm, 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 <laughs> not again or no not you and so to be able to love that wound because there's such a gift there for all of us there really is and if we can find the gift then we can have the, find the healing yes yeah i i really thought it was going to be such a tricky thing at first i thought well gosh how how do I know what the wound is saying? And, and I, cause I couldn't see any of my wounds. I, I'm one of those people that I won't look, I look away. Right? And, <laughs> ugh, gross. and I thought, well, we have to be authentic when we show up, when we do these shows. And I know, I mean, you certainly are every time. And I thought, wow. What, what? And so finally a wound re- revealed itself, you know, appeared to me and highlighted some, some things. And I was thinking about, well, okay, a wound. I, I know what a wound is, a flesh wound, you know, the sore. But then I thought a wound is a symptom. A condition, a diagnosis, a circumstance, a relationship, it's the subject of it. And and I was wow. really thinking, yeah, I went really deep, Noemi. I did my work this week. <laughs> I am really so proud of you, Lisa. You did. You did. And so, um, and we are getting the gifts. We are getting lots of gifts by doing this. We, we're not sitting here saying that we have transcended the wound and we are living beyond wounds all the time but we are learning and we are growing and we are living beyond some of our wounds and we are healing others yes yes and i would i'm actually going to share i'm going to share one of my the the wound that spoke up to me because i i never saw something this way ever before i hope everybody gets a really big aha moment here who who here oh i feel like i'm on a live and people are going to answer me but anyways (laughs) I'll ask the listeners and even yourself, Anuemi, have we ever identified, or maybe we still are, or people have accused us of this, or maybe we actually enjoy this title, but the title of a people pleaser. And I say this because normally I would, that, that's not a bad thing to me. I was like, well, so what? So you're a people pleaser. So what? I can be a people pleaser at time. But there's a wound that comes with that, that maybe we accept treatment from others that is almost on the on the line and ver- the you know the, the I forget that's called but yeah the verge of um, abuse like verbal abuse or mistreatment or um, uh, over um, being used like um, people take advantage there you go mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so people pleaser my wound said like I would never have looked at like um, you know being a people pleaser at times or taking on not all the time but at times thinking that that maybe could be an instant where a wound could be created from that and then you don't see. How, what this other side of it is. And that showed up to me this week and it, it kind of caused a little heartache. And I went, Ooh, Ooh, I don't like that. That's a wound. And I went, Oh no, I got to look at it saying something. This one's talking. <laughs> so that was my <laughs> thing to me. And, and, and the question is going to come. I think they're going to come through for you to be able to share yourself from you and then to channel about what are other words that we might not relate to a wound, like people pleasing, you know, that doesn't sound like, does that sound like a wound to you, Noemi? Well, it's very interesting because when I put my psychotherapist hat on, <laughs> I recognize that people pleasing, I think it, it comes out of a temperament where we're maybe predisposed to be people pleasers because we're, you know, those of us, and I won't really say that I'm that much of a people pleaser. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. You're good. <laughs> well, and you know what? But that includes myself. I wasn't all. I, I, I haven't been a people pleaser uh, for myself either. It hasn't been necessarily that I'm by not being a people pleaser that I'm making. Sh- I'm pleasing myself all the time. No, I lumped myself in. Don't need to please, you know, <laughs> and, and or don't need to please all the time. It's not that I, I'm callous uh, most of the time right. i'm not um but but it's that you know so there's a temperament that makes you even keeled mellow and there's your heart that cares you know so if you're em- empathic compassionate you're more likely not to want to see people suffer and so yeah but then on top of that usually there's a wound you didn't please people and they suffered and it hurt you or you didn't please people and they said something mean oh, to yeah. you and it hurts you and so 
that then becomes a, a self-reinforcing machine. So now we have to, to please people again, you know, make a, a bigger effort to please people. And, um, and so then that then again leads to more wounds if we try and they're not pleased because some, you know, there's no pleasing everybody all the time. It's not possible. Even if you sacrifice yourself, you can't please everybody else all the time. Because sometimes one person will be pleased and the other person will be displeased. And so, so and, and, and there's no truth. There's no self-truth. Ooh. There's no personal truth in trying to please somebody else. Mm-hmm. The word truth. That was a good one. I can. I, I already feel the questions bubbling up for you to, um, mm-hmm. to have a little chat with the divine. And the reading has a, a bunch. Oh, no, <laughs> yes. not this reading. No, no oh. this reading doesn't have truth. That was another one I was reading no. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. This reading, uh, the divine is correcting me. This reading is full of truth. It may not mention the word truth, but it is full of truth. And that's... Oh, let's have that read. Yes, let's let's do the reading. We'll have that first, and then because there's there's stuff pouring in here right now, I can feel all these little questions bubbling up. <laughs> oh, I can feel you bubbling up, Lisa. <laughs> and so, this is a reading from my upcoming book, the second book that I'm working on, "A Divine Message for These Times," and it's channeled messages that are relevant to what's going on in the world today, and and in in within us and and our role within the world today, and so. So the question was for me, so this is discover the lesson of the wound. That's what I called it. And the question was, if wounds could speak, what would they say? And here's what the divine says. Your wounds are not really your wounds. But you do not own other things that you carry with you, like your memories, with the same intensity that you own wounds. You claim wounds. You acknowledge them. To let the wounds go, go, you must first let go of your ownership of them. There is no deed of woundedness that identifies you as the owner of the wound, as there is deed to your house that identifies you as its owner. Don't own the wound so much. Yes, acknowledge its existence and presence with you, and don't dismiss it, but don't over-identify with it. The wound is there with a lesson and a message for each of you. The wound is not there as punishment or poison. It is there to help you grow and heal. You must also understand that it carries a lesson specific to you and your experience. Once you understand the lesson, it is easier to let go of your hold on the wound, and it is easier to heal. Your actions and inactions toward the wound keep it tethered to you. Some of you tend to avoid the wound at all costs, dragging it forward like a ball and chain. And others of you pick at the wounds, obsess over them, can't stop picking at them. You can't take your focus off of them. You become hyper-focused on woundedness, and especially your biggest wounds. Learn to leave the wounds alone, but don't ignore them. If you had an infection in your body and you ignored it, you would become sicker. Tend to the wounds, see it with compassion, care for it with compassion, but don't baby it. Care for it without giving it your power. See the wound, acknowledge its presence, learn the lesson. Why is this wound here? Ask this question and then become more aware and observant in your life. Open your awareness to receive an answer or a knowing about the answer. You may hear a song that contains the answer. Or you may meet someone unexpectedly that reminds you of the answer. The answer may show up in your ordinary conversations with loved ones or colleagues. Or it may announce itself in a vivid dream. Or come to you in the stillness of meditation and mindfulness. Both of which are very valuable to all of you. Practice meditation daily and you will become still. In the stillness you can hear us speaking. Practice mindfulness and you will become present. In presence, you can sense the answer. Seek to know why the wound is still with you. Keep that question in the forefront of your awareness. Then listen as you go through your life more observant and aware, yet still quiet and centered. If you want to know why the wound is here and what you need to heal it, you will certainly receive the answer. But first, you must become quiet to hear it. In a still mind and heart, 
everything you desire and seek to know can and will be revealed. Once you have your answers, the path out of the wound into healing is easily revealed. There was three hot topics on that one. (laughs) There was many. (laughs) You're hot today. (laughs) Oh, that was beautiful. There's so much in there. And I I know that we're still really highlighting to people um, to have the stillness and and hear, listen, uh, be aware of the wound and I think that you, you you nailed it there. Thanks, thanks, divine. Um, with the with the sit in stillness and meditate. That is so often we are just like like what I just said. No, no, no. I don't have time to look. It's good. I'm good. I'm I'm go on. And and what I got an image, a very powerful image. You know how we put a bandage over a wound, like a band aid. I I actually got an image of a mouth with tape over it, but it's the wound, and we have to take the mouth, the, t- the tape off the mouth. So the wound can talk. So the wound can mm. share its message and kind of like the take a bandaid over the mouth of the wound. So we can, we're not babying it, but we're tending to it. That mm. really showed so up. As bandaged it. up the wound. Yeah. Yeah. So it reminds me of the image for, for the show description, yes. which is so vivid with the taped up heart and the, and the, the woman hiding behind the wall behind the behind that that wound i just thought of that picture too before you said that yes that was the most you guys got to go to the facebook page to see this picture like it's just perfect (laughs) and i mean that was fabulous that was incredible i was like what (laughs) i don't know where it came from (laughs) but it was was, really so amazing and it spoke so much to me it did. Well, I know we're sneaking off to commercials, but when we come back, we are going to be talking a little bit deeper about this and why, when the wound does talk, why it's very specific to you and your experience. And that's where we're going to go when we come back to Access to Angels Ooh. and Grace. Ooh. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. The universe is eager to help you and give you clarity. You only need to be willing to ask your burning question and listen to the answer source wants you to have. As a channeler of divine messages, I take your questions directly to the divine and hear what source is longing to tell you. I'm Noemi Grace and my co-host Lisa Berry and I welcome you to join us as a listener or caller on Access to Angels and Grace, two Wednesdays a month. Call in, ask your most burning questions, hear the Divine's exact words giving you guidance and clarity. Access to Angels and Grace, where messages of joy await you. Hi, this is David Strickle. I'm excited to share my brand new show, The Stream of David Live, right here on Home Times Radio. Each week, I'll have exciting guests, and I'll channel the eternal wisdom of the stream, a group of non-physical entities whose teachings have transformed lives all over the world. So join us for an uplifting hour each Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. That's the stream of David Live right here on Own Times Radio. These are the sounds of a dinner, a dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. It's so easy to be heal in a healing state with that music. I just love it. <laughs> I 
I love it too. It's just that I, when we took our break over the summer, I really missed hearing that music. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that neat how music actually does, it, it's soothing, and you had, in the reading there, you talked about in the stillness, and I, I do think music can guide us to stillness, it can take us there and hold, and just hold, gently hold us there, like a hug, <laughs> it's a hug. <laughs> oh, absolutely, I, I listen to a lot of music that is sacred, I feel, find it mm-hmm. sacred, and it, it really brings me into stillness. Actually, my favorite form of meditation is now listening to music like that rather than than doing a mantra. So, um. I love that. It's like a company accompanied. Um, yes, it does. That's why they call it company music. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Before we went to break, I loved during the reading that um, you you were previously channeled, and that's where these readings come from. Everybody, um, Nomi, you mentioned that they are from your other your previous book or your upcoming book. But what your books are is that you've been in your stillness and you've had the conversations with God and the divine and source and and then you've written these these out so you've maybe asked a question or maybe it's just coming through you which I love <laughs> and um mm-hmm. it, it came out about how the wound is sharing it's it's very the message what it's saying is very specific to you and your experience and yeah the, the question that's coming through that I would love that I really am feeling oh it's a biggie it's <sighs> When the wound speaks, um, it's a different message for everybody. And what I'm feeling right now is about, it's a forgiveness thing and about when somebody has a, a wound and it's healing and they are trying to move on, they're moving on, but they don't, fe- they still have that hurt that the fr- the other per- the person, the reason why they had the wound in the first place, they don't feel like that person deserves their forgiveness. And, and I wanted to, to ask for what I'm feeling is when people are feeling, hmm, well, they don't, they don't deserve the forgiveness so that they can't give the forgiveness, but that actually does it hold them back. Can they move on? Can they heal? Um, could we talk, uh, could we have you channel and ask about forgiveness oh, and healing? Yes. So oh, was- forgiveness is one of my favorite oh. topics. I was, I was actually, I have channeled a whole bunch of messages already on forgiveness that I was planning to be working on now to put together for my second book. And then this other book came in in between. But so as far as I know, it'll be my third book. But forgiveness is such, oh, it is such a potent topic and so important. And yes, there is non-forgiveness, unforgiveness, however you want to look at it, keeps, certainly keeps the wound in place. And so, um, forgiveness helps us helps us to let go right this there was in here you have to let go of the ownership and and let go of holding on to it and of your hold on the wound um and forgiveness helps that if we don't forgive we're really hanging on to it so um what i've learned and and personally and i will go i will check in with the divine but what i've learned so far is that forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves. it's it's not about the other person because you know now we're learning that we're hanging on to wounds and um and the unforgiveness keeps them tethered to us and then um so forgiveness i think you know in that first channel message that i received from the divine there was a line that says forgiveness paves the way to freedom mm. And yeah, that's such a tough so. one because people, were, that's the, I think that's the one, that's the question coming in for source is that yeah. when they, they want to, they know, and they, they're going, I know I feel so much better and I want to like, but I, gosh, that person did this horrible thing to me and, and I mm-hmm. don't want to offer that. Like my, like, it's almost like, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that for the source because I can't even okay. wrap my head around what's oh, going on I, I like, here. I love this topic. <laughs> Forgiveness is one of my favorites, so I'm happy to be of service in this way. So um, for those of you maybe listening for the first time, how I channel is I get, a, I, I have this connection going before we get on the show with the divine and I get deeper with it. I get, so I go into that stillness a little bit more. So I get a little bit quiet for a few seconds, which is not your typical on radio, but so I'm going to get a little quiet to deepen that connection. And then I'll greet the divine and then couple more seconds and and they'll start speaking so oh 
Oh, hello, Divine. So glad you're here to help with this question. It feels really important to me, and um, I know it is one of your favorite topics, as it is one of mine. So, to help us and the listeners, what can you say about this forgiveness of, of things that, that feel unforgivable and, and how? Well, whatever you have to say. Ah, we're grateful. We too are grateful for this opportunity. Forgiveness is vitally important for you, for you all. Forgiveness is not something to seek from us, but it is something, or even to seek from others. It is something for you to give your, to yourself and to offer to another. And when you offer it to another, it is not con condoning of any behavior or any action when you offer to another you are actually offering it to yourself if you want to feel better offer forgiveness and offer it to yourself as well many times your deepest wounds are in a sense self-inflicted it is the harshness of your tone in which you speak to you, yourself the critical messaging that you are saying sometimes even constantly, that you are unaware of, that is in the background of your mind, criticizing, criticizing the smallest, smallest things that we see as completely insignificant when compared to your beauty and your brilliance and your light, because within you is a great light, every one of you. We placed it there so we know it's there. It may be buried deep beneath and behind many wounds, but it is there within you. And to reclaim that light and allow it to shine, you must get rid of everything that is in front of it, everything that is hiding it. If you had a flashlight or a lamp in a dark room, but it was buried behind blankets and boxes and, and all kinds of things that you barely you could barely see and it was your only source of light you would need to get rid of what's in front of it in order to use it in order to see it and in order to use your light to shine it and use it for your benefit for your healing to become the fullness of who you are and the beauty that we created you to be you have to get rid of what's in front of that light what's blocking the light what's burying the light and so the wounds that you carry it is part of being human to have wounds it is there is no human that has not had any wounds you are all wounded it is part of the fragility and the vulnerability of being human but in that vulnerability is your greatest gift compassion kindness grace so many gifts come out of that vulnerability. And so to not forgive is to keep all of those things piled in front of the light that you are. It is to keep you away from your light. It is to separate you from your light and make it difficult for you to access your light. Your light is so beautiful you don't even know. And carrying the hurt of the wounds is causing you to dim your light, to dull your light. Let your light shine, and in order to do that, get rid of everything that's in the way of it. It is not worth it. You have no idea how free and liberating it is to fully be you, to fully be your light, to be unencumbered by all the wounds, to be in the light, to shine in the light, to be you in the light. So many of you are hiding so much that you are barely visible. You have mastered invisibility, almost like a magician. But you are invisible to yourself as well and invisible to others. You don't serve yourself in this way. It is a great disservice and it creates more wounds. And as we said, a lot of the wounds are unfortunately self-inflicted. Many wounds have started from interactions and behaviors and actions of others, but then become self-inflicted over time. And so the willingness 
to let go of the wound is essential and it is for you. It is not for the other person. The other person has their own wounds that are blocking their own light and maybe their actions towards you were so, what you may call unforgivable. They were judgmental. They were abusive because they are so separated from their light. Your forgiveness is not in any way doing anything for them. And yes, it does do something for them, but it is not in any way an acknowledgement that they're right and you're wrong, that it was okay what they did. Your forgiveness actually subtly does do something for them, but it does so much more for you. Forgiving them frees you. It gives them an ounce of forgiveness and it gives you an ocean. It gives them an ounce of freedom and you an ocean of freedom to let go and forgive. If you forgave all your wounds, you would be fully free. Is you're seeking, so many of you, the path to freedom. Forgive. Heal the wounds. You cannot heal them without forgiveness. And many times, as we said earlier, the forgiveness that must be given most is the forgiveness to yourself. Even when you judge others harsh, harshly and blame them for your wounds, oftentimes you blame yourself too. You should not have had that conversation with them. You tell yourself, why did I do this? Why did that? Why did I put myself in this position? And it is all for your growth. It is all for you to learn, to discover who you are. It is through your wounds. And we know, Noemi Grace, you love that quote from Rumi about the wound is the place where the light enters. And yes, that was divinely downloaded and inspired. And yes, that is where the light enters. But the light is already there within you. And it comes out if you heal the wound and so our light comes in through in that wound and within you behind beneath those wounds has your brilliant light and that is available for you and it will transform your life more than anything else if you heal those wounds so give yourself the gift of forgiveness whether the person you forgive is yourself or another and you will be surprised at how much freer you are and how much more joyful and peaceful you are. We are complete in this transmission. Namaste. Ah, namaste. That was so much about light. Oh, mm-hmm. I had to stand up. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that answer, but I love it. I mean, I agree with it. It's great. You know. Yes. You know, what's interesting is um, I... <laughs> Fun. I'm sharing the funniest things today. Um, I love the, <laughs> the feeling of when somebody has come to me and said, you know what? I, that wasn't nice of me. I, I, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. I actually get a little, I think my heart gets a little high when I go, yes. Oh, of course I forgive you. Yes. And I can feel the freedom. I can feel the freedom from offering that, that forgiveness. Yes. Have it. This feels good. And I thought, I was just thinking as you were um, channeling there is that that's how we get to, we, if we give ourselves forgiveness, we get to get both of those gifts. We get the forgiveness and to give the forgiveness. I got excited. I I stood right up. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Oh, I I just so appreciate your enthusiasm for for what we do here. Um, But yeah, it is, it is, um, I always, I knew the forgiveness was a gift we give ourselves. I mean, I, they told me that a long time ago. And um, on some level, I think I, I had already known that. But what, this piece about the light and how the wounds are blocking the light. And I was like, oh, yes. it's, 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 wow. And that how much freedom there is in being our light. It's it being our unique light, the unique light that we are and shining that, you know. It, it's freeing and liberating. And, and certainly for me, I I did the invisibility mastery thing for a long time. And um, I only let people see what I wanted them to see. And, and it was pretty good at squashing it all. And so in coming out as an author and channel, I, I've really, really had to change that oh. a lot. And it's really, I, I love being me a whole lot more when I can be all of that and, and not hide pieces of me. Yes. You know? I, oh, I, 
two things really quick. I, I just moved a lot of boxes around, and I remember I just um, <laughs> like thinking, "God, what is behind there?" And then when it was it wasn't just moving the box out of the way; it was moving the contents that was in the box, and then mm-hmm. really cleaning it out. And I I, um, I wrote this word down or sentence question: Have you mastered invisibility when you were channeling? Because I remember I was I went through very I was very angry. It was a very angry period for me when I was a teenager. At some point, God, I was just we're, we're mad at the world. Who knows? And um, I I remember I used to love when it rained because I thought good. Everybody else is miserable now too, and we can all put our heads down and put an umbrella over our face, and nobody gets to look at everybody because I hate the world. I remember going through this period, and I remember when I finally went, ah, I really want to. It's it's too much work to be this miserable. It's too much work to be invisible, <laughs> yeah. and miserable and invisible. And I remember I lifted my head, and mm-hmm. from from then on, I think I made this promise myself that ah. That's too much work. I want life to be effortless. So I just started offering forgiveness left, right, and center to myself and put it, raising my head up high. And it was just like you said, I liked being me. And and it felt good. And so I, I hope that people are right now are thinking, ask themselves that question. So have you have you mastered invisibility? And and how can we support you in being shining your light and being seen? Mm-hmm. Great question. <sighs> Gosh, I know we're going to sneak away to commercials. (laughs) Yes, Yes, we are. (laughs) But when we come back, some more goodies and helping you guys hear what the wounds are saying. If if the wounds could talk, if the walls could talk, the walls around your heart and wound. (laughs) Mm -hmm. When we come back. Access to Angels and Grace will be right back. a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, lightworkers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. So I'm a cat and I just moved in with this new human and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week she asked it for Chinese and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. All right, another question came to my little my little world, Noemi. Your little expanding world. My little expanding world. And it was like, whoo, all right. And I had to write it down quickly because it came rushing in. It's, yeah, Mm. I think you really, that was beautiful what they shared about um, moving the boxes out of the way to get, you know, to to shine the light. And then about the contents and and what's in the the, um, boxes. Like it's not just the box, it's the contents. So the question that came through to me was, if you wouldn't, if we would lovely have that chat with the divine again, um, do we need others to safely heal and go through the contents in our wound box? Mm. Support and safety of others. If it's a big one, a big heavy box. 
No one heard our backs. I have a feeling you know the answer to that, but I'm sure they have something juicy to say. Yeah, they always add that, yes, I can always think I know, and I go, nope, didn't know that. (laughs) Well, yeah, right? I mean, I, I, I said... I said my piece about forgiveness before channeling the last message, but it never dawned on me that it's the wounds are blocking our own light and, and that they're like these boxes that are, and we've got our light source, our own internal light is behind that. And, and, and they're, they're blocking the way the barriers to our light. So that, that image that they described, I never visualize that before even occurred to me so that was that was really sweet ah, i always learn something new it's something yeah. relevant and something helpful so love doing this Aww. love it love it so <laughs> ah, so okay so maybe how can we how do we know when we need others? Do we need others? Um, how can we ask people for their assistance if we do need it? How do we know it's the right person to ask? Oh my gosh, this is lots oh, of others. This is a, a plethora. <laughs> oh, <it's> a, <laughs> what? <laughs> do we need movers? Do we need movers here to clear these boxes out from our source? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Do we need movers? <laughs> How do we know when we need the movers to clear the yeah. boxes? <laughs> love that. Uh, I love metaphors. I just, yes. mm, so much. Let's move love a lot of things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> moving day. <laughs> We're moving out. We're moving things out as as we go through yes. the show. So so yeah, let's let's dive in with that one and and um we'll start it nice and early so we won't be up against the uh, the hour as we conclude. <laughs> Which is a, has been our our case, but um yeah. Okay. How do we know when we need the movers? How do we reach the movers, find the movers? Yeah. How do we know who's the best movers? All of that stuff. So, that's that's a loaded question anyway, so better give them <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a swig of water first. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Going in. Okay. Going silent. Hello, Divine. You heard all of that wonderful question, line of questioning. And um, to continue what you shared, love to hear what what you have to to say and how you can help us in moving those boxes, the wound boxes. And we would love to continue this conversation, this dialogue that we are having with you, this message. Each of you has, as Lisa said, the wound box. Each of you has box. Some may have one small box. Some may have a room full of boxes. And many of you had a room full of boxes, but are now down to a few that just seem really difficult to let go of. Even if you don't look inside the box, even if it's in the corner, your light is behind the the box. And so it is important to be willing to let go. And yes, you do need each other. We created you as relational beings. We did not create you to be alone, doing it alone, this, this idea of this, this kind of lone, lone hero, um, you know, the brave warrior and warrioress is, is in your mythology and in your, your legends so powerful, and yet it is so important to have support, and certainly if you watch the movies that have made of these people, they all had support. And so, but you do not even need to be this this warrior out in front battling. You can simply be someone wanting to get rid of the box. And so, the box is there. And so, the boxes that you have kept and preserved for the longest times that you may be dusty and cobwebby and that you do not even know what's in them. Those are the ones you need the most support with. If it is a recent wound, someone said something or someone did something or didn't do something and it, and you felt hurt, 
those are easier to let go of, even if they are a reopening of a previous wound, to let go of that layer of wound. It is the peeling of the onion. The healing of the wound is a peeling of the onion. And so the onion of unforgiveness, the onion of woundedness, and so peeling the most recent layer is pretty easy. As you get deeper in the layers, the wounds have been reinforced. They have been kept, kept for a long time, and they've been supported. They've been, again, reinforced and supported by what has happened and your reaction to what has happened. Your response to what has happened has re- reinforced those wounds. And so there's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in seeking support. And many of you feel shame when you cannot do it alone, when you cannot fix yourself. And we are do- saying this in quotes because we do not see you as needing fixing, but we see you as wounded. And we see wounded as part of of the the normal human path. Each human gets wounded, and without wounds, you would not seek a deeper healing. The wounds are there, and they remind you that you need healing. They remind you that, that healing is necessary, and that if you are not seeking it, the wounds, the wounds keep coming up to the surface, and they keep getting agitated and, and injured and re-reminding you that you are wounded. And this is not to beat you up. This is not for you to feel ashamed and bad badly about yourself. It is for you to recognize, ah, I'm wounded. That means I need healing. And I'm wounded. That means healing is available to me now. You can all heal all of your wounds. Some of you feel that there are wounds that are too deep, that you must go to your grave with that wound. And you do not have to go to your grave with any wounds. If you learn to continue to, as the fresh wounds happen, to continue to forgive, to continue to let go, to continue to release, you will not acquire many more wounds on your way to the rest of your life. And so if you can then forgive the deep wounds, and if you can release the deep wounds, and you can get support for those that releasing and that freedom that will come, You can arrive at the end of your life unwounded and in your last final breaths release any wounds that you are carrying. So yes, you can actually arrive at an unwounded place and you may be unwounded for a little while and a new wound comes and because it is a fresh wound and you do not have a layered stack of woundedness within you. You do not have all the boxes piled on top of each other. It's just one little box. It's easy to forgive. It's easy to let go. It's easy to see it as, oh, this is something so small. I can let it go. And it doesn't become a struggle anymore. So getting help is so important so that you can stop struggling, so you can start living more, and you can start loving more. And so to know who to ask for help that is that is for some of you very hard. And so we will offer a few things. One, look at the people that you admire, the people that have been healed, have healed themselves the most, that have worked on healing themselves. Ask them how they got there. You could even offer them some positive feedback. You, you inspire me. And I'm just wondering, how did you get to this pl- Were you born like this? And they will always say, of course not. How did you get here? Listen to them. Find out how they got there. Do they have a new healing practice that they do for themselves? Do they res- work with a certain healer? Did they read some books that that opened them to understand so much and, and help them to heal spiritual practices? What What are the things that they have done? to help them heal. So if you have no idea what to do, look for the most healed person that you know. And if you don't really know them that well, make an effort to know them. Perhaps you are friends on social media, but not friends outside of social media, not friends in your life. Make an effort to get to know them. Ask them, how do they arrive? How do they get to where they are? And they will be happy to tell you. Everyone loves that kind of a question. They'll be happy to tell you, and they will give you a gift. They will give you a key. Also, if you read things uh, that are inspiring to you, read things that touch your heart. 
from different people. Seek them out. Those that touch your heart. Those who you can say, oh, yes, that really spoke to me. Seek to read higher vibrational news, higher vibrational reading than the news, the, the, the news of the world. If many of you feel you must know what's going on, and we understand that and we support that, but do not saturate yourself with that. Saturate yourself with wonderful material and podcasts if you prefer to listen or, or books that are transformative. Find people who have walked the walk and been on that path and have done what you need to do. This is a good strategy for anything, any endeavor, a business, anything, but for healing just as well. You can find the people. Listen to your heart. Listen, how does it make you feel when you read what you wrote, they wrote, when you hear their voice, when you listen? How does it make you feel? How do you feel? You will know. You will know how it feels, if it feels good, if it uplifts you, if it inspires you, if it gives you hope. That's the direction to go in. Start there. And so much grace is available to you. Start and move forward in that direction. And doors will open and and opportunities will present themselves and people will show up and you will start to be able to trust that more and more. And that will lead to greater and greater healing. In this moment, we are complete. Namaste. Ooh, that was a long one. Wow. Mm, That was perfect. Oh, I Mm. love that. Mm. Yeah. I have to... Say one fun fun thing I, I did get a little kick out of because you know I would is that we the question was about hi- hiring movers and how to find them and everything and when when um you shared about looking for assistance that helps lift you and I'm like that's right we need help lifting those boxes <laughs> so like, uh, don't want to injure yourself don't want to hurt yourself lifting those heavy boxes right. yeah yes <laughs> but what I what I really felt was um uh, a beautiful message in that was when it comes to to knowing when you do identifying when you do need some help with forgiveness, it's to seek a higher vibration for assistance. And one, how we can recognize that is a higher vibration, meaning one that lifts you, one inspires you, one that offers you hope. And Mm. that is, that's what I really, I love that was, yes, now I, you know, you need assistance, movers, helpers, support is to seek a higher vibration that may come in another person that you feel that you are witnessing and feeling their healing that they've accomplished. Or that, like you said, a book. So many times I've read the perfect book and I was like, gosh, I needed that. That was it. And that's help. That is help. So thank you. Mm -hmm. That was just beautiful. (laughs) Oh, yes, it was. And I'm so grateful. Hmm. Um, the hmm. other one I wrote a little thing here. I love. I kind of laughed about. Don't be the hero healer. Um, <laughs> the, the the one was um, you don't have to go to your grave with wounds. And the series mm. is called Living Beyond Wounds. Living, living beyond wounds, not going to the grave with the wounds. And uh, I thought that was just perfect. A lot of us can feel like. Nope, this one's this one's mine to bear. This one, this wound is is I own it. Like we talked about the ownership, the um, going to the grave with it. Uh, no one can help me. I'm I'm not worthy of being healed. I'm not wor- all these mm. things that we say to us. But I love that you shared that. We no, you don't have to go to your grave with a wound. It's time to live beyond the wounds. Yeah, yeah, and I loved when they said when you can heal those the deep those old wounds the the ones that yeah get some help with um then you get a new fresh wound it's so small it's like this tiny yes. box and you can let go of it it's not yeah. piling up on top of all the other boxes this tiny box on top of 100 boxes yes so. the deep clean and you know what's funny is like my kitchen will get out of hand it will just be blown right up and i'll go oh my gosh and so then i spend that time you know an hour two hours cleaning the kitchen then i think oh look at this it's only one little teacup next time i can handle that you know <laughs> <laughs> That's well, beautiful. So, you know, one thing that occurs to me is that, you know, if any of you are listening and you have certain wounds or certain topics that you want help with, then, yes. yeah, you can go to, we actually have an Access to Angels and Grace Facebook page. We haven't really populated much, but but you can certainly put post the message there. I will see it. And yeah. and um, you can contact either Lisa Berry or Noemi Grace on on 
on social media, on Facebook and or via email or websites and let us know, hey, I'd love to hear about this. This one just seems too big or this one is something I want help with. We'd love to uh, channel that for you and, and, and share it. And, and thank you for saying sharing, no, Emmy, because I'd like to, to end off by saying if you feel like maybe somebody else may need to hear this show, we would so appreciate you sharing that. That's the gift. Like The gift is to share the replay of the show with, with your friends, with your people, with somebody you just think, hey, they might just like this because they may be going through something and you don't want to you know, get you know, put your nose in there, but you want to help. So we invite you to share. We invite you to connect with us. And we look forward to he- talking and sharing with you again in two weeks. Two weeks, no, Emmy, we're back. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. Yep. Second yes. and fourth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Second and fourth Monday, Monday of every month. Oh, Noemi, thank you so much. And uh, oh, Lisa, my you pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, bye, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Yes.